dun 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 warning warning dun dun spoilers the wicker man review has spoilers i'm sure you guys don't care anyways but for those that do care just be warned there are spoilers it's caught on in a flash they did the mash they did the monster mash Hey everyone, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here with my guest star. Joe Cola. <laughs> What's up, everybody? <laughs> and the two of us are here to review the 2006 film starring Nicolas Cage, The Wicker Man. Before the both of us review this film, my guest star, Black Critic Guy, aka Tony Wadley II, is going to review this film. So, Tony, take it away, dude. Hello to each and every one of you watching this video right now. I'm Tony the Black Critic Guy, and I'm here on 22 Tiger Dudes channel to review the <laughs> epic masterpiece. <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. But I'm here today to review the film The Wicker Man, starring our favorite actor of all time, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> What is left to say about this film that hasn't been said by almost everybody across the board? We all know that it's horrendous, the story is incoherent, the characters are weak, the direction is sloppy, and the acting just not good. But I will say this about the film, it is quite enjoyable, especially if you look at it as an unintentional comedy. And again, this has been said by a lot of people as well, because the film is just freaking hilarious, just scene for scene chock full of hilarious moments, all given to us, of course, by the performance of the one and only Nick Cage. But I will say this about Nicolas Cage's character in the film. He is without a doubt the most relatable character in the entire film. Because when he's confused and doesn't understand what's going on, you too are confused and don't know what's going on. When he's fed up and can't take any more of this shit, you too are also fed up and you don't want to take any more of this shit. And again, just to reiterate it, this film is so unintentionally funny. I laughed out loud so many times in this film. I mean, just some of the things that these characters do or the situations that they end up in are just hilarious. Like that whole fight that Nicolas Cage has with Sister Beach and that other girl that's really hot and then he dresses up in a bear costume, walks up to this girl, the girl's like, is something wrong sister? He just goes whack! Smacks her in the face in a bear suit. Why are you ever gonna see Nicolas Cage beat a woman in a bear suit? I mean, that is just hilarious and you know, just so many things, like whenever he, when he grabbed the doll, he was just like, How did it get burned? How did it get burned? Or his very infamous bee scene where he's like, Oh, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah, oh, they're in my eyes! They're in my eyes! Ah! The Wicker Man as a horror film is complete garbage, relying heavily on cliche horror tropes such as weird imagery and jump scares, but lacking any sort of suspense or thrills to entice the audience. As a fateful remake, yes, this film was a remake of an older film made back in the 1960s, it is horrendous, having none of the essence that made the original so great, but as a comedy, it is gold. If you want to have a good laugh at how ridiculous a movie is, this is the movie to see. And although it is a piece of shit, I'm actually going to give this film a 1 out of 5 stars. It is an unnecessary waste of time, but the reason I give it a 1 is because Nick Cage is just freaking entertaining in this film. I mean, seriously, he's in a bear suit and he hits a woman. You don't want to miss that for the world. And that's all she wrote for The Wicker Man. And I'd like to thank 22 Tiger Dude for having me on his channel. You are awesome, man. And please, subscribe to his channel if you have not done so already. And come check me out, the Black Critic Guy, on my channel. Hopefully, there'll be a link in the description. And until then, everybody, I'll see you all later on my channel. Peace! Thank you, Tony, for reviewing The Wicker Man. You rock. Okay, so now it's going to cut to me and Joe reviewing The Wicker Man. And um, The Wicker Man is about a sheriff played by Nicolas Cage. He investigates the disappearance of a little girl. And there's a whole mystery to it when he goes on this very secretive, neo-pagan 
community where there are people that are very religious and they believe murder is a thing. Yeah, when I'm describing the plot itself, it sounds really ridiculous. So, Joe, I'll let you start. What did you think of the 2006 film with Nicolas Cage? <laughs> well, I, I had never seen it. It had made it to my, uh, probably to my VCR, but I never actually put it in and watched it, so I probably returned right. it before I watched it. Uh, so when you asked me to, if I wanted to watch it, I watched it. I knew it was bad going in, so... I didn't expect much, and yeah, it's pretty bad. It's and not only is it bad, it's pretty boring too. I mean, if you look at it as a serious movie, it's downright horrible. It's boring. Nothing happens till the ending, and you got to look at it as a comedic film, or you're not going to get anything out of it. I don't think. And 2006, when this film came out, I've read a lot of reviews on this film actually, and there were people that flat out hated this movie. Like There were people that were actually excited for this film. They couldn't wait. And they came out saying, wow, that's one of the shittiest movies they've ever seen. And yeah, I could totally agree. It is one of the shittiest films I've ever seen. But to me, it's like a guilty pleasure. If you don't take this film too seriously, you yeah, could yeah, have yeah. fun with it. But like what you said, Joe, nothing happens in this film. And if you just take the overall movie seriously in terms of like its storyline, its characters, oh god, the dialogue. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah then you're just going to hate it. It's not something to be taken too seriously. I mean, for God's sakes, it's Nicolas you, Cage. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can take it seriously at all. I mean, I, I mean, even in retrospect, I guess Nicolas Cage has said that, oh, the film wasn't intended to be taken seriously, but I think it was. <laughs> And, it, I mean, it does have some seriously funny moments. I mean, they have a video on YouTube, the best moments of Wicker Man or whatever, the best of Wicker Man. Watch that video. It's hilarious. I mean, the part when he wakes up on the dock with the girl in his arms and his <laughs> reaction to that and then just the acting in general. Nicolas Cage is not the worst actor in this movie. You know, it's like everybody playing against him is just as bad, it seems like. And that's the ironic thing. Yeah. He's actually the best actor in this whole movie. The scene with Leela Sobeski when she uh, he front kicks her into the wall towards the end, and the way she like gets like knocked out. Yeah, the way she acts when she gets knocked out, it's like some of the worst acting. You can see why she's not doing anything right now. You know. And what makes it more ridiculous is how he's in a freaking bear suit. <laughs> well, that in the writing that the bear suit and then the riding the bike around, like trying to you know. It's not too suspenseful when a guy's riding a bicycle around, to me at least. And like the way they played it compared to the original one, I mean the original people wanted their name taken off it. The original director, I guess they were using his name in the promotion. They were giving him credit and the director of the original film contacted him and had his name removed. And I mean they, they kind of tweaked the story so much. The original one isn't that bad. I like the original one. It's kind of like this cool, weird you know, story and it takes place in the UK, which is quite a bit more likely probably for something like this to, you know, this uh, Celtic sort of uh, religion or whatever. And that one it was, you know, they're all pagans. And this one they try to take more of like a sexual, um, not sexual, but a man versus woman angle on it. And it failed miserably. It just came off really stupid. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, the original Wicker Man movie is actually really good, but this one's nothing like the original at all. It really isn't. The storyline is very terrible. I mean, I, when you think about it, it could have sounded like something very interesting. I mean, he's investigating the crime of this little girl, well, the disappearance of this little yeah. girl. And it sounds like an interesting concept, but how the movie executes it. It's very dumb, and like what you said, Joe, the writing is crap. I mean, some of the worst dialogue you could ever uh, hear in your life, and like when he's investigating some of these people in that pageant island community, some of the stuff they just say to him, it's just all like, well, is he, that something you would say in real life? Well, the, I made a comment thing here too. Yeah, it just seemed like Nick Cage was totally disinterested in even all the scenes, even when he's supposed to be acting serious. And then another thing I made a note here, his hair. It just like takes me out of it because it's this horribly dyed, it looks like a wig or whatever. I don't know if it's a wig or fake hair or, you know, it just has like spray in it so bad. or It does not look good on high def, definitely, his hair. He goes to an island where he knows the main production is honey. And then he, I don't know, he just kind of does it and, you know, oh, I'm allergic to bees. He doesn't even freaking care. It's kind of like, would someone believe any of this crap? I mean, once the people were acting so strange, it was just so ridiculous, you know. 
it just, and the ridiculous things about how yeah. they actually how murder is part of their religion. Well, I mean, like I can understand the you know the sacrifices that needing to be done, but like once you've seen the original film and you know the twist, you're kind of like, uh, and then you know once they do it again, you're like. In the only part it's worth is, you know, the famous scene with Nick Cage getting the bees, you know. It's ridiculous. Not the bees! Yeah, you think Not he'd be a little more, bees. yeah, nervous about going to an island, you know, that makes honey for a living, which he clearly looks up on the website, and then he just goes with it. Oh, I'll take a couple EpiPens, which is fine, but I once things started getting slightly shady, I would have been all, eh. Yeah, I wonder, during that bee scene... If he was act, if he actually meant to be dramatic at that moment, or if he was just being silly just for the sake of being silly, he's probably just on so many like antidepressants and crazy pills or something. I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on in Nicolas Cage's head, why he acts like that. But I mean, maybe yeah. he just feels he has license to because he's been doing it so long. But I thought, I mean, it it is something interesting. We're talking about it. Obviously, it worked on some level. I mean, he claims it was intended to work like that, but. I doubt it. I mean, those flashback scenes are ridiculous. I, they're just in there for, like, no freaking reason. I mean, the girl looks exactly like the girl that, you know, he gets suckered into, and I'm like, oh. And then all these random events happen. Like, there's a scene where he sees the girl outside, and he, like, comes outside, and it's all like, what was kind of the point of that? Yeah, I mean, well, the girl, the one girl, the teacher, and then he meets another girl that looks just like her, and... I don't know if they're inferring like some sort of inbreeding or, you know, his, his, you know, they tried to make a like a psychological film and then make like this uh, statement about ma manhood or whatever, man versus woman, because you know yeah. his name is Edward Malice, which is the term Malice is a combination of male phallus. And yeah. Then, you know, the, it's just so stupid though. I mean, <laughs> what's the freaking point of it, Mother Earth or what? I don't understand and. I don't know. The ending's the only cool part. I mean, it's hilarious. You get to see Nick Cage in a bear costume, and then it just descends into madness. You can watch the first, like, five minutes to get the setup, and then, you know, cut to the last ten minutes, and it's freaking hilarious. Definitely the final 20 minutes is where things get more stupid. Or, well, the movie's already dumb enough as it's building up, but, I mean, how, where it builds up in that final 20 minutes. And then once you see what happened to that little girl, you're just all like, oh, well, he did all that well, hard work for nothing. Well, that and then the, the the actual ending of the film, like the epilogue or whatever, is just like ridiculous. Uh, you know, James Franco turns up, and I was just like, God, this movie couldn't even take a step lower. You know, <laughs> James Frank. I'm not a big James Franco fan, but I was like, James Franco's in this movie? I was like, uh. And then I noticed the second time, too, Aaron Eckhart's in the movie for like a split second, but he's like just sitting at like a table or something. But, yeah, the movie just is like – you have to – like either watch it with comedy intentions. I actually watched it again, and I right. sat the first like 20 minutes watching it at regular speed, and then I clicked on the two times speed, and it's pretty funny because they're you know the whole movie's like chipmunk voices, and it just <laughs> makes everything that much more ridiculous, like him riding his bike and stuff. Right at the end, I clicked it back on normal play for the last 10 minutes or whatever. Right. To, to see him running around in his bear suit, which I thought was freaking hilarious. How could they not think that was gonna be funny? Not only that, but I think the classroom scene how he was trying to confront the teacher about if they seen the little girl or not. It's just all like, I could, I could not help but just die laughing at the scene. That was probably the funniest moment of the film right next to the bear suit scene. Well, they walk out They walk out of the classroom and they're talking all serious and then he, she started to say something and he just like cuts her off and it's just like really, either it's like the most natural acting or the worst acting possible. The way he says it is so like bizarre. It's like, hey, you know... And that's how he does everything. It's like they're talking to him, and then he just acts like something, you know, acts stupid or something like that, and then rides bet, around on I his bet, bike. <laughs> I bet the kid actors in that classroom scene looked bored. They're all like, oh, what are we doing here? Just to get paid? Well, at least we're getting paid, yeah. Hello, Mommy, <laughs> Daddy? Yeah, I got paid, so get me out of this crap pool. Yeah, I got paid, and I met Nick Cage, you know. I don't know where they filmed it at, but, uh, yeah, they were probably excited to meet him. I would assume if they know who he was, they're probably a little young. I will say that the cinematography actually does look pretty good. I liked how they filmed the movie. Well, the island looks nice. I mean, yeah. it looks like some place that would be nice to visit, you know, if it was under different circumstances, I guess. 
<laughs> the whole male like thing where the guys were like downtrodden too it was just uh it's just all like ah oh, we're on a relaxing island here Joe yeah. would you like some nice pink lemonade to go with that good sir <laughs> yeah the mead or whatever and then he like kills the bee that was pretty funny like I don't know it, it just it, I, it, every scene was hard to watch and then some of it was just so boring it was like mind numbing well, just, I gotta ask yeah. you this Joe was it hard to watch in that way that you could laugh at it, or was it h hard to watch, like, oh, my God, I can't watch this anymore, just turn off the screen? The first time I watched it, I was, you know, expecting it to be bad, so I was just kind of, like, blown away how bad it really was, how yeah. mind-numbingly bad it was. And then, you know, the, I did laugh at some of I, I watched the first, then I was looking at some of the stuff online about it, and I pretty much, every, I think everybody laughs at the same part. You know, I watched the techno remix of him getting the bees put on his head, and you know, they intercut it with him diving in the um, <laughs> in the water to say when he sees that, that girl's was image in the water. The way that just looked was funny. And then when he wakes up with the girl in his lap, his reaction, God damn, or whatever he says. <laughs> <It's ridiculous. laughs> the Wicker Man, exactly. A big budget movie that like literally came out horrible. I mean, what do they spend all that money on? Costuming or something? It's ridiculous. <laughs> I know it's all it's all like they spent like yeah. half of their profit on that bear suit for Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> I think so because that was probably the best looking thing in the movie actually. So, oh my god. I mean and, and I guess his salary is expensive but that's like a 40 million dollar movie and I don't know. And the cameos at the end were definitely unexpected. Um I I like James Franco so that was all like huh that was kind of cool for them to add there and then you know Aaron Eckhart for a split second that was cool. We see him too, but yeah, the ending. Wow, but what can I say about the ending? That was yeah, something else. I mean, it's it's like cool if you've never seen it and you get the twist ending. It's kind of cool, like the whole reasoning behind the story. It, right. You know, that's what made the original movie cool too. But yeah. it's like the lead up is so freaking boring. It's like, uh, okay, you know. <laughs> it is all like, is this even worth it? Yeah, you know, Nicolas Cage running around getting told off by a bunch of middle-aged women, you know, it's like not too entertaining. You, you really do look at this movie and you're all like, it, it could have had potential to be good, but as it builds up, it really leads up to nothing. And then like you said, for some reason, they feel the need to show the same damn flashback like four times. And then once it cuts to the ending, you're all like, yeah, okay, what was the point of all of the events that happened leading up to that? So it's all like even the build-up was shit. What well, that I had read that the director wanted to keep it kind of like, uh, you know, open to more people. So he kind of kept a lot of blood and gore out of it. I think they should have went for, you know, some some action or something, some something to make liven it up a little bit. You know, make there's the women any, more threatening. There's any, like no suspense to this movie. I mean, even the religion stuff was just kind of like half-assed. They didn't even make it like a cool coven or something, you know, it was just like, oh, you know, we're here on this island and we study blah, 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 you know, so. Overall, um, The Wicker Man, it's a terrible movie, it's very shitty, but it is personally one of my guilty pleasures, I could sit down and watch it, especially when it's around my friends, if I feel like watching a movie so bad it's good and just yeah. laugh at how unintentionally awful it is, then. Yeah, I would definitely pop in the Wicker Man for sure. I think if it weren't for Nicolas Cage's movie, oh, yeah. then then this movie I think would have been just so bad. It's just so so bad, in my opinion. At least. I agree with you on that because at least if you're a Nick Cage fan, you know you're gonna want to see it. He's the only drawing factor to it, unless you've seen the original one. And <laughs> like you said, if you had seen the original and then saw this, and if it wasn't Nick Cage, you would have been just like worst remake ever, which is pretty much still the worst remake ever, but. Pretty much. No, it, like, can still be looked at as a comedy, at least. Overall, I would give The Wicker Man two and a half out of four stars because it is a guilty pleasure. It's a really bad movie, but it's a bad movie I could just sit down and laugh at. Yeah, I, I would give it a two out of five. I do out of five. So two out of five because, like you said, one would be it's utterly horrible, Nick Cage wasn't in it, and it was just a sh crappy remake, not even redeemable for uh, comedy purposes. But since Nick Cage is in it and you can kind of watch it as a comedy, give it a 2 out of 5. Uh, I don't know if it's so bad it's good, but it's definitely worth watching. You know, it, it's close to that category at least. Would you say it's bearable? Uh, <laughs> if you can make it to that scene, it's it's pretty good from that scene. 
True. edited down to like a 20 minute movie. Yeah, that scene's awesome. Well, thank you very much, uh, Joe, for guest starring here awesome. to review The Wicker Man. Cool, brother. Thanks for having me. Is there a way we could find you, man? Oh, online, yeah. Uh, YouTube.com slash Caldwell3, C-A-U-W-E-L-3. Link to Joe Caldwell's channel in the description below. Thanks to Black Critic Guy as well. I'm going to leave a link to his channel in the description below. This is me, 22 Tiger Dude. And me, Joe Caldwell. Don't forget that the both of us will always have Tiger, Tiger Power. Power. There we go. All right. <laughs>